Oops, all Spideys. The new trailer for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is lousy with wall crawlers. So what did you miss during all those blinks? The trailer is deliberately light on villain action, but what it lacks in antagonists, it more than makes up for in Spider-themed heroes. Clearly, the wealth of Spider-Folks in Into the Spider-Verse was just a light warm-up. The trailer is packed with dozens of different spider folks from different universes, and the task of recognizing them all will no doubt keep fans busy for quite a while, especially because some of the cuts are as deep as they come. Sure, it makes sense that we're getting a prominent spider-adjacent character like Miguel O'Hara, but did you expect to see Maybelle Riley, the steampunk-influenced lady spider of Earth-803 in there? How about a Spidey who's happily rocking a version of the bombastic Bagman costume? Or perhaps Spider-Monkey? Spidey donning the Spider Armor Mark II, Spider-Man Unlimited from the 1999 TV series of the same name, the Spidey from the PS4 Spider-Man game, all of them and many, many others are all present and accounted for, slinging webs and duking it out. It remains to be seen just how deep the movie's cuts will be, but for a movie series that started out with Spider-Ham, it seems that anything is possible. A huge part of the trailer is, understandably, Oscar Isaac's Spider-Man 2099, aka Miguel O'Hara. The muscular, sharp-fingered superhero from the future is painted as something of a threat in certain parts of the trailer, but a certain moment makes it clear that this is merely a Spider-Man who has a whole bunch on his plate. We see Miguel watching a futuristic hollow screen that displays a happy scene of him and a young girl who appears to be called Gabriella. In the comics, Miguel has a half-brother called Gabriel, so the implication here is that the young girl is related to him, though it's not yet clear if it's his daughter or the original character reworked to be his much younger sister. Or perhaps an orphan he's looking after. Regardless of their exact familial relation, it's clear that the two are close, and the fact that we see this happy image in the trailer implies in no uncertain way that Gabriella plays heavily into Miguel's motivations in the movie. Gwen Stacy isn't the only familiar spider person that Miles Morales finds himself interacting with during the trailer. His old mentor, Peter B. Parker, can be spied at several points in the trailer wearing a bathrobe and sporting what appears to be a baby carrier on his chest. Has he finally become a dad? After all, the ending of Into the Spider-Verse did see Peter realizing that maybe he liked the idea of being a parent more than he thought. Yep, not only have Peter and Mary Jane Watson healed the fractures of their relationship, but they've also officially settled into parenthood. Even better, their daughter has been confirmed by the screenwriters to be May Mayday Parker, a fan-favorite character who, if the comics are any indication, will inherit her father's powers and one day become the Amazing Spider-Girl. The Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse trailer also gives us our first look at Issa Rae's Jessica Drew, aka Spider-Woman, in a stunning new costume that takes cues from her comic book look while being unafraid to do something different. The character looks to make quite the introduction as we see her burst through a multiversal portal on her motorcycle. From the looks of things, she seems to be working closely with Miguel O'Hara, seemingly confirming the friendship reported on in the footage Sony showed at CinemaCon. We've known that Issa Rae was going to be playing Spider-Woman since back in 2021 when The Hollywood Reporter broke the news, and while there have been a number of Spider-Woman in the comics, most notably Julia Carpenter and Maddie Franklin, it's only fitting that Drew, the most prominent Spider-Woman of the comics, will be the one to appear first. That said, expect to see a lot more of her soon. The studio is planning to make a female-led Spider-Verse spin-off featuring Drew, Ghost Spider, and Silk. When we get our first big reveal of the Spider-Verse, or Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, amidst the numerous Spider-People on screen, we see a version of the hero wearing a paper bag over his head. This character then returns later, at which point it's apparent he's animated in a comic book art style, indicative of his comic book origin. Those familiar with Spider-Man's Marvel Comics history will recognize this as a suit that Peter Parker wears in the issue of The Amazing Spider-Man, in which the Fantastic Four first separate the alien Venom symbiote from Peter's body. Following that procedure in the comics, he wears this goofy outfit, from that point referred to as the Bombastic Bagman, in order to disguise his identity. 
However, while the paper bag is straight out of the comics, the rest of the outfit is different. Because on the page, he simply donned a spare Fantastic Four outfit. Here in Across the Spider-Verse, the bombastic Bagman appears in a standard Spider-Man suit instead. This is almost definitely because Disney now owns the movie rights to the Fantastic Four, meaning that Spider-Man film rights holder Sony can't incorporate a Fantastic Four outfit into their Spider-Verse. So while the bombastic Bagman remains a pertinent comic book reference, the character will be lacking his Fantastic Four duds, probably as a simple way to avoid the scariest threat of all legal complications. One key moment of the trailer sees Spider-Woman take down a winged villain. This being a Spider-Man movie, we all know which bad guy has big, creepy wings, and that's Adrian Toomes, also known as the Vulture. He's an iconic foe that was a favorite of both Sam Raimi and John Watts. It's unlikely that Vulture plays a major part in the film, especially given that Vulture was already the big bad in the recent Spider-Man film, Spider-Man Homecoming. Still, this continues a trend from the first film of finding small parts for all the classic members of Spider-Man's rogues gallery. Remember how Into the Spider-Verse featured cameos of such villains as Green Goblin, Scorpion, and Tombstone, while also giving bigger roles to Doc Ock, Kingpin, and Prowler, it's likely we'll see something similar here. This is pretty standard Spider-Man stakes, you get used to it. Watch this, he's gonna say, you've got 24 hours. You've got 24 hours. In all fairness, it's only right that Vulture makes at least one appearance in this series. The villain has been a staple of Spider-Man comics since his introduction in Amazing Spider-Man number 2 in 1963, where he was the first super-powered foe that Spider-Man ever faced. 